Jose, do you have any additional questions regarding documents that need to be included in your acquisition requirements package? Yes, I do, Michael. As you mentioned, there needs to be a Quality Assurance Surveillance Plan, or QASP, included in the package. Would you mind taking a moment and providing an explanation of what requirement directs us to create a QASP and what is required to be included in the document? Certainly. If you wouldn't mind, I'm going to request another member of my team to join us in this conversation in the conference room. Her name is Beverly, and she is a quality assurance specialist. But before I do, let me summarize the answers to your questions before Beverly goes into the details with you. A QASP is the government's plan outlining how it will ensure the contractor meets contract requirements and ensure the contractor maintains quality control. The Federal Acquisition Regulation documents the requirements of the QASP. You see, at the end of the contract, the government must accept or reject the contractor's performance and certify contractor's invoice for payment. Quality Assurance Oversight provides the basis for acceptance and payment or rejection. The QASP outlines the plan for government quality assurance oversight. A plan is necessary to ensure the oversight is effective. Oh, I see. The QASP is a plan to oversee the contractor to ensure we get what we pay for and ensure the contract is meeting our needs. Exactly. And as with any plan, a QASP should contain the five W's, who, what, where, when, and why, and should also contain the how. With regard to a QASP, those five W's are translated to what will be inspected, when it will be inspected, who will inspect, where inspections will take place, why inspections are needed, and how the inspections will be conducted. The why is answered by identifying risk level, and the how is answered by determining the method of surveillance. Give me one moment while I'll call Beverly and see if she is available through video teleconference. She can answer your questions in more detail. Beverly, good afternoon. This is Michael. I'm with one of our customers, Jose, and going over the acquisition requirements documentation, specifically the QASP you and I were talking about not long ago. Do you have a few minutes to link up via video teleconference and go over it with Jose? Great. I will teleconference you in shortly. Good news, Beverly is available. She will join us in a moment via video teleconference in the conference room just down the hall. Beverly, good to see you and thank you for joining us on such short notice. I'd like to introduce you to Jose from the Garrison office. We were discussing acquisition requirements packages, and he had some questions regarding QASP requirements and what we may expect to observe when reviewing a QASP submitted by the requiring activity. I am doing my best to head off any questions that may be asked when I return to the office. This is going to be my first time submitting an acquisition requirements package, and I wanted to make sure that I clearly understood when a QASP is required and what it should entail. Great to meet you, Jose. Michael, let's start Jose off by pulling up the slides you and I went over last week. First, the Federal Acquisition Regulation Part 46102 establishes policy that contracts include inspection and other quality requirements that are determined necessary to protect the government's interests. Supplies or services tendered by contractors meet contract requirements. 
Government quality assurance is conducted before acceptance. Non-conforming supplies and services are rejected. Quaffs are designed to ensure these policy requirements are met. Next, FAR Part 46103A requires the contracting officer to receive technical requirements prescribing contract quality requirements, such as inspection and testing requirements, or for service contracts, a quality assurance surveillance plan from the requiring activity. FAR Subpart 46401 suggests the quads be prepared in conjunction with the preparation of the statement of work or, in your case, the performance work statement, or PWS. Your plan should specify all work requiring surveillance and the method of surveillance. Additionally, DFARS 246-401 states the requirement for a quality assurance surveillance plan shall be addressed and documented in the contract file for each contract except for those awarded using Simplify Acquisition. As an example, a paragraph included in a fuel storage PWS may read, Contractor shall develop a government-approved fuel tanker inspection standard operating procedure, SOP, to include a tanker and prime mover inspection checklist and shall conduct pre-inspections of each tanker and prime movers in accordance with DOD 414025-M. FM 10-67-1, Chapter 28, Section 4, and Mill Standard 3004. These inspection standards shall be used to inspect all fuel tankers, trucks, that arrive on site to receive or deliver bulk fuel. Contractors shall maintain a record of all tankers that fail inspection and keep an active file that identifies all failures for a period of 60 days. This should be delivered to the contracting officer's representative or core 30 days after contract award. While the language may seem vague to some, the actual requirements are listed in the documents referenced listed within the paragraph. To ensure a contractor is operating within the guidelines of the example paragraph, a surveillance item with characteristics would be part of the QASP. Think of area of surveillance as a requirement. In this example, fuel tanker inspections would be the surveillance item. Now let's look at one of the reference documents, FM 10-67-1, Chapter 28. Tankers would require inspection prior to unloading or receiving product and prior to loading or preparing for shipment of fuel. Referring to Section 2 of Chapter 28, the first paragraph make reference to a checklist located in Appendix J. The checklist lists the characteristics or details what is needed of inspection on fuel tankers. That's right, Beverly. Jose, your plan should specify all work requiring surveillance with characteristics and the method of surveillance or how you will be performing the inspection. Using the example Beverly gave, fuel tanker inspections, you may want to perform your own independent inspection after the contractor has performed their inspection. This will be known as a direct observation. The level of surveillance described in the plan should commensurate with the dollar value, risk, complexity, and criticality of the acquisition. Also keep in mind FAR subpart 46.102 Quality Assurance states agencies shall ensure that no contract precludes the government from performing inspection. Okay. So the QASP evolves and will formalize a plan for a detailed scheme or method of government oversight and surveillance. Am I correct? Beverly, you also mentioned talking about the specifics of what a QASP should have in it. Can you elaborate? Yes, you are correct. And I'd be happy to elaborate on that. 
There are a lot more things that need to be in a quas. And the designated core, along with the contracting officer's concurrence, will develop those elements. The quas needs to address risk, work effort, and the personnel responsible for oversight and surveillance. Any unique, singular, or special requirement of the contract, performance or inspection, and acceptance criteria that may have been previously referred to in general terms, that is by title or referenced in the PWS or Performance Requirement Summary or PRS, shall now be specifically identified, risk rated, and prioritized along with any special requirements. Specific procedural steps for such things as corrective action, contract and nonconformance, meeting and reporting procedures, lines of communication, unique inspection checklists, and accompanying schedules shall also be completed. Oh, I see. Well, it looks like I'm going to have some work ahead of me. No, not really. If you consider all the effort you put into the performance work statement, the bulk of the work for the QASP is nearly complete. Think about this. For every requirement you generate, take a moment and think about how someone from outside the contractor will be able to validate contract requirements are being met. Many contract requirements are contained in contract clauses, not just the PWS, and the list of deliverables may not be completely contained in the PWS. Let's discuss the remaining basics for a plan. The who, the what, the how, and the when. We have already identified the individuals who will be appointed as the CORs on this contract. Great. Keep those cores engaged throughout the process of creating the quas. Now, the what for the plan is validating or performing inspections to ensure contract obligations are being met by the contractor. Earlier, I mentioned taking a moment when generating your PWS and think about how someone from outside the contractor could validate the requirements. The requirement could be considered a surveillance item. Each surveillance item should have characteristics or what the contractor should be doing to comply with each requirement, or better known as inspection items. This sounds simple enough. Is there more? Yes, next is the how, or the method of surveillance. When creating your plan, consider the manner which the inspections will be conducted. Will the core be looking at 100%, doing random sampling, direct observations, periodic observations, etc.? Last is the when, or the frequency of core inspections. Generally, those requirements which would fall into a higher risk and would need to be inspected at a greater frequency than those that pose a lower risk. Document, document, document. This is what ties all this together. That's right, Beverly. Documentation of surveillance activities on contractor performance are an essential part of the COR contract file that needs to be kept on record. Documentation may consist of inspection schedules and checklists, government acceptance or rejection, nonconformance, actions including the relevant corrective action, any monthly or periodic status reports, test reports, relevant telephone conversations, and meeting minutes. Great. Thanks for the information. We need to try our best to ensure my organization is getting what we are paying for once the contracts begin later this year. Is there anything else I need to know or take into consideration? While the majority of the requirements may be in the PWS, please don't forget that throughout the contract, there may be additional requirements as well as deliverables which need surveillance. They may include other assigned duties and responsibilities, such as contractor performance assessment reporting, or CPARS, contractor manpower reporting application, or CMRA, 
Combat Trafficking in Persons Program, or CTIP, property, etc. You may want to include where the completed inspection records will be kept and reference FAR Subpart 4.803 B15 Quality Assurance Records. Jose, it is important that you treat the QAS as a living document, dynamic and variable, based on contractor performance throughout the period of performance. QAS flexibility is required to allow for an increase or decrease in the level of surveillance. You may make surveillance adjustments based on contractor data and trend analysis, providing the rationale, whether adjusting frequency of inspections to adding, deleting surveillance items, etc. There is a flowchart within ACC mapping the Acquisition and Procurement Process Application, or MAP app, which will assist you with completing the QAVs. Within the flowchart, Select the post award section 5.2.1.3.3 for quality assurance surveillance plan. Within this section, you will see what QAS generally contains to assist you with preparing a template to complete the QAS for your applicable requirement. Thank you. If I have any additional questions, I'll be sure to contact one of you. Perfect. Thank you. I'm always here to help if you need anything moving forward. Same here. Call me anytime or shoot me an email. Have a great day. You too. Signing off here. Talk to you soon.